we are so unique that even our lady parts look different from anybody else. It's like a fingerprint. No two look alike. I say like flowers, you know, like the orchid, mm -hmm. right? Like I always compare the vulva to the orchid. And so like each orchid is different and beautiful. This is part of Pelvic Health 101. They should be teaching this in school to our young girls. Instead of the sex ed now, you know, my daughter just has sex ed. And she came home and she was like, what? She's my daughter, so she's, very, she's read all my books. And <clears throat> she was, Ma, you were not going to believe what they taught me. And I'm like, well, I'm curious. I want to know. You know, I want to know. And it was just about, you know, abstinence, still the same thing, nothing about the body, very little information. And I live in New York City. Yeah, well, let's talk about that a second, because, you know, many, so many moms raising kids, what do, you know, what we want to teach them, and I have four daughters, so, you know, oh, I've so gone through the gamut, yeah. yeah, and I've taught sex ed <laughs> in, in school at the local, I'm like, how much do I really want to, you know, like, how much do I share, what all do they need to know, these girls are starting their cycles, and, and at all at different stages of development, some very underdeveloped, some overdeveloped, like, you've got this whole range, it's like, okay, you know, that whole concept of, I, I say this, and sexual CPR in my uh, webinar that I give, Help Doctors, you know, my sex drive has no pulse. So we talk about the ABCs of sexual health, right? Mm -hmm. Acceptance, accepting where we are now, be present and see, communicate. And so I think that like step A, you know, is just that acceptance of, of our different bodies, our unique bodies, and just understanding these are the stages of development. So what have you taught your daughter? Tell me. <laughs> well, the first thing that I told my daughter was her unique anatomy. And it's very funny because my daughter came up to me and said, hey, listen, one of the girls in school didn't know what her clitoris was. And she's 16 years old. And she didn't know where the urine came out of. And my daughter was like flabbergasted. So I started by explaining, first of all, her unique anatomy. So she knew all the different parts. I explained to her um, what a pelvic exercise was. I explained to her about relaxation. I explained to her about... Um, that her body is her temple and it's unique to her, that no one looks like her and she should never compare herself to another woman or to another, you know, pelvic area. So I wanted to her to know that, that, that we are so unique that even our lady parts look different from anybody else. It's like a fingerprint. No two look alike. I say like flowers, you know, like the orchid, mm -hmm. right? Like I always compare the vulva to the orchid. And so like each orchid is different and beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful in its own right. So not to compare. And I think that's a big issue that at all ages we have with, right? Comparing ourselves to other people. And especially at this vulnerable time period of adolescence. And you just want to just hug them and tell them they're beautiful and precious and unique and to honor that. Because I've had 20-year-olds come to me with, you know, gynecologic concerns of their vulvas being different. Yeah. You know, like, um, you know, one's longer than the other, you know, one breast is bigger than the other. I'm like, okay, that's normal. Good for you. You're normal. Mm -hmm honor that normalcy and that's okay you know and that these things tend to you know even out over time as well so be patient with your body yeah. and then also you know i just thinking about too when one side's off from the other is just the whole pelvic floor rehabilitation chiropractic yeah. or osteopathic manipulation let's get our nervous system in line because sometimes those are just sim you know signs that something's off balance that needs to be improved upon too so totally. So it's a, it's a beautiful time period and that your daughter's blessed to have you talking to her about this because you're right. It's, you know, like bringing up the words and um, the language around it and also the sacredness of our individuality as well. Totally. And in the beginning, I was, I was like, I'm a pelvic floor therapist. I've cheated over 14,000 women and obviously over 52,000. And when it came to my daughter, I was actually shaking. I was like, what? I was so nervous. I was sweating. I was I'm so glad you <laughs> to hear you say that. Oh, yeah. I tell you, right. You know, if, if Issa as a pelvic floor therapist and me as a gynecologist and sexual health expert has have some, have had some like, how do I go about this in a very, you know, holistic, honoring, 
way for my child that she gets it, honors it, and is like, okay, I've got question and knows that she can communicate and ask questions. Yeah. Like if there's something you can ask her. I have one daughter, she's open about everything. I'm like, you don't have to be that open with me. Yeah, exactly. Like, no. <laughs> and, and one who's very closed mouthed about all of this. So it's very interesting. So honoring their individuality as well as as communicating with them how, you know, how precious they are. And just also in today's day and age, it's like, you know, what we need to know about that. And that will go into a whole nother sex ed for teen talk that we really think we should do. Oh, 100%. I think we should definitely do something like that because it's so needed. Mm -hmm. It's so needed because I mean, women come to me day in and day out. They say, I don't like my vagina. I hate my vaginal lips. Look at this, look at that. And then I look at them and I'm like, there's absolutely nothing. This is completely normal. Yes. There's yes. nothing absolutely wrong with the way you look. Yes. And, and then it breaks my heart because, you know, it, 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 it sort of eats up inside them. Mm-hmm. And it, diminu- it, it, it makes them feel less confident about themselves. But then once they get through my, you know, the therapy, I'm like, no, look at this. And this is, and then in my core, in my programs, I do a live gynecological explanation of the privacy because I'm like, nobody knows what the parts are. Yeah. I hear it all the time. And, and so the first thing I do is I just take out a mirror and I just say, yeah, this is it. This is completely normal. You're good. Everything is fine. You know, and it is an asymmetrical thing as you typically do to something happening to on the outside, an orthopedic issue. The pelvis is off, too much tension, whatever, neural tension, you name it. So then they're like, oh, okay. And then I feel like that, I feel like that's the beginning of healing. Like you said, yeah. the, oh, AP, the acceptance is the beginning of healing. It really yeah. is. Yeah, it is. And again, not to, you know, when it comes to like, what are we comparing the images that the kids sadly are seeing and being exposed mm-hmm. to early on? It's yeah. like not realistic. And again, to understand everyone's unique and best to not do any intervention is better than intervention in 99.999% of the cases. Oh, so. for sure. I mean, so many women come to me after these vaginoplasties because they've had this shame and embarrassment around their lady parts. And I'm like, oh my God, now we got to deal with the scar tissue. But now we got to deal with nervous tension. Now we have to deal with, it's, it creates a whole big, huge mess, you know? And, and they feel like when they get these surgeries that everything's going to be perfect. They're going to look perfect. Everything's going to be perfect. But that's not always the case. You know, I mean, it is major surgery. And, but a lot of what I've treated a lot of that um, in the past couple of years. And, and I'm like, well, what's done is done. You know, we just move forward. But if we can start to have this conversation early on that it is our unique anatomy, that we, this is the way, it's, we're perfect for ourselves. We're perfect for Absolutely. ourselves. Absolutely. Honor it, re, you know, honor it, respect it. And like, like with anything, you know, I think that's the starting point for a good foundation in our self-confidence and just accepting where we are right now, focusing on what's good. And also like, again, let's not compare. I think that's a really, I mean, that's for sure a really big downfall and no intervention is better. Some, you know, again, do no harm, right? That's mm-hmm. our goal. That's our goal in the medical profession for sure. It's do no harm. And, um, and so the education piece is part of that prevention. It really is, you know. And I recently took my daughter um, to the doctor. And, you know, they do, when they're at a certain age, they do these exams. And, but she, she was, like, totally comfortable with it. I was like, oh, I'm the one that's, like, oh, squeamish. I'm the one that's like, wait, no, 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 not doing that. No, not doing that. No, you know. And, and I was like, okay, I had to take my own stuff out of it, you know. And be like, all right, this is, this is good, okay? We're going to do this examination, everything. We're just going to see. This is the first time. Everything is cool. You're perfect. And she was like, I know, Mommy. And I was like, oh, okay. You don't need me anymore. <laughs> I, 
I, I think that's that's amazing. I say, you know, again, I, I definitely entered the field of gynecology because it was something I was very like uncomfortable and I felt was needed more women in the field, right? Like how do we make people having these, you know, trusting in a physician to be as comfortable as possible and safe mm-hmm. and feel safe and know that they're being taken care of. And I think that's really important and that we are creating these programs and we have this for women of all ages, mm-hmm. that that you know, has that healing potential at any age, because we've, you know, so many have suffered through unhealthy experiences. She's in her 60s, and Carol has a new lease on life. Vaginal dryness and discomfort during sex were causing real problems. But just in six weeks with Jolva, this has already turned things around. Jolva is my all-natural, feminine cream for our lady bits that really helps with dryness, irritation, and those accidental bladder leaks. So get a new lease on your life, especially in the bedroom with Jolva. Find Jolva for women at dranna.com and use the code show 10 to get 10% off your first order. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel here and get those notifications and comment below. Let me know your thoughts, what you loved and what your action step is.